Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. If you guys watched a previous video, you guys saw this thing. So this is my buddy's uh, 1987 Toyota Corolla, but that is a Honda S2000 engine. Has also the Honda S2000 transmission. So this crazy man decided to drive it all the way from Toronto down here to Tampa, Florida area. And he made it, obviously, but now we are in pieces. So what happened was he had a shop install a crush sleeve eliminator so it's a solid spacer that goes between the two pinion bearings and he didn't correctly shim it and it essentially just tore up his rear end so by the time he got here this thing was screaming and i'm not no gear expert by any means but i am learning and essentially we took it apart and when we checked the actual wear pattern what was happening is the pinion gear was riding off the edge of the ring gear on the drive side and on the coast it was hanging up a little bit so from what i've found that means that the pinion isn't deep enough into the ring gear so what happened was it essentially just chewed out this bearing so this was a solid spacer that goes between and what happened was there was no spaces on here so buddy just cranked down the pinion nut tightened it up and essentially this bearing here had nothing to push it back to keep it in the race and it just chewed the race and the bearing down and then the pinion started to walk and that's where our weird pattern came from and that's where the noise started coming from because this thing was whining. So what we did was we ran around and we actually found a bearing. So we're gonna replace, he just wants it enough to get him back and then I guess he's gonna, the guy who did it's gonna warranty it or something but um, we're just doing it enough so he can drive this thing home back to Toronto and we're replacing this pinion bearing here that way because we could technically shim it like re-shim the pinion with the used bearing but rather than do that we're just going to go ahead and put a new bearing in here so that he has the correct pinion depth again and then we're going to reassemble it put the proper amount of spacers he did get these spacers overnighted to him and these are the spacers that are supposed to make up between the two bearings so that's where we're at let us uh get this together we're going to uh shift over here to our press our hydraulic press press off the old bearing off the pinion put the new one on and we'll show you guys all the stuff we're doing okay so we got our 12 ton hydraulic press here and we've got this bearing puller here and we're just pressing this down so we're effectively taking off this bearing right here so i'm gonna run this we actually got it to move fairly easy there it goes. You ready? It might it. come firing out. No, once don't it. say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's under a lot of pressure, it right? Is. 12 tons, this thing's gone if it needs it. So. So, you ready for when it drops? Yep. You're almost uh, off the taper there, so. There it is. Sweet. Beautiful. That was a lot easier than we thought. Yeah. She's off. Okay, so our assumption was correct. So once we got, this is the old bearing, this is the new bearing. Essentially what happened was this got tightened in. So when this was on here and you're supposed to have your crush sleeve in the middle, there's this solid crush sleeve eliminator that goes between the two like that. And the guy never put on the appropriate shims. So essentially what this bearing, once he tightened this nut, it was pulling on this bearing with whatever preload or torque he put on here. What that did was I kind of saw a little bit of a clue right here is the cage was touching the actual race. And if you guys can see like this cage is exceptionally loose right now from all the wear in the bearing. And the actual rollers, when I press the cage tight, the roller on the inside just about disappears flush with the cage. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but the inside portion of these rollers is completely just obliterated from having excess pressure pulling this bearing. Whereas, whereas if you compare a new bearing, there's not as much play on the cage, which isn't completely relevant, but the actual roller sticks up a lot higher and it is actually parallel with our cage. So you can see the clear difference. So that essentially is why, because of this war, our pinion ended up coming away. That's why we're getting the weird wear pattern. 
So now we're gonna put this new bearing on. It should put our pinion back in the spec. We also have a new race, so we'll put that on as well, but let's go ahead and press this on. All right, she's on. That was pretty straightforward. Brando's got the punch, getting the race out. So, we weren't able to, this seal is like one of these unicorn parts, so we didn't take the seal out. It was new about a, two weeks ago. Yeah, when the rear end got rebuilt, quote unquote. I know. So we're okay. almost out here, John. Sweet. Looks good. Let's keep going with that. So there's two channels that we're going back and forth with on this to be able to punch out the race. There it is. Voila. Okay, so the race is out. Okay, so right now we're putting in our new race. We're just using our old bearing just as a guide. So we're just running it down. Might have to flip our little socket shim here, but she's going in nice and smooth. Okay, so we've got a brand new race in there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install our pinion with our new bearing. We will have to assess the shim situation. There is a kind of a standard set of shims that people recommend to try because these shims have to go with our solid spacer. So we're gonna go with uh, what the other guys were using. So we'll measure those out and then we'll throw them on, put our pinion in, and uh, see what we got. All right, so we just went through the instructions for the crushed sleeve eliminator. We put in our two spacers here. This is kind of gonna get us in the ballpark. Spacer's gonna go on, and then we'll slide this back in, put on our flange, and then put on our nut, and uh, see what we got. All right, so we torqued this down, down to see where we're at, and this is what we do now. Hopefully you guys can hear that. So that's the play up and down which means that our spacer is too much because the bearings haven't cinched together. So what we do here is we take our dial indicator, we're gonna set it up and we're gonna check how much that flange is moving up and down when I do what I just showed you there. And then we are going to subtract that amount of shim from our shim stack on our crush sleeve eliminator. And then once we get to zero, then we're gonna remove, I think it's like 0.003 or four and that's gonna be our preload on our bearings. So we're gonna go through that process and uh, we'll show you guys. So I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this, but right now we're zeroed out. If I lift up, it's showing about 12 thou right there. So essentially what we have to do is take out, right now we have a 15 and a 12 thou shim in here. We're gonna take out the 12 thou shim, then it should be zeroed out. And then we want three to four thou of preload. So essentially, this probably sounds complicated, but we're gonna take out the 12 if it's zeroed out, then we're gonna take it all back apart again and replace the 15 with the 12 and that'll give us our three for preload. So that's what we're gonna do now. So here we are, we're disassembled right now. So this is the 15, that's the 12. We're gonna take the 12 out for now, reassemble with just the 15, put our sleeve back on, do it all again, double check they were zeroed out and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're torqued back down. We torqued the nut back down. That's, maybe we should show that, but <laughs> anyways, we're zeroed out. You can't, there's zero play in it now. Um, Brandon, you wanna see if you can illustrate? Like there's no clunk, no nothing. Our dial indicator doesn't even move. Yeah. So now we're zeroed out. Now we're gonna apply preload to this. So like I said, we're gonna take this all back apart. We're gonna swap out the 15 thou shim for the 12. It's gonna give us three thou of preload and then we should be in spec. All right, so this is our makeshift holding tool. So we've got, two punches and we just put them in here and then I'm running the torque wrench or you know bar and he's got the pry bar here and that's how we're effectively loosening and tightening this thing here. All right so we just swapped out the shim that's the 15 the 12 went back in and I'll show you guys how we are tightening this thing down. All right so right now we're just checking the drag on the bearings here so we're between 12 and 15 inch pounds right here under the constant motion either direction so we did have to go different like we had to actually take out even though we ran the calculation according to their instructions we ended up having not enough preload on the bearings based on checking the drag 
um, with their, you know, 0.3 from zero. So we ended up going down to a 0.8 from our 12 to achieve the right amount of preload on the bearing. And uh, that's what it says on the instruction, it says 12 to 15. So we're in that ballpark, which feels decent. So now we're on the next step. All right, so we got our ring gear and our carrier assembly back in. Got the dial indicator gauge. And these, and this luckily has um, adjustments here. So you don't have to mess with shims. You just run it in and out. And I've got it at six thou. Spec on this was five to seven. So we're right in the middle there. And now we're gonna run our pattern and see what she looks like. All right, so we were trying everywhere to find actual gear marking uh, compound or whatnot, but we ended up getting a variety of stuff. Right now we're trying a yellow paint marker that we found. So we do have Prussian blue, but it's a little bit harder to see. We tried white lithium grease and it was really hard to see. And it kind of just smeared and caked all over the place. So we're hoping this works out. And we're about to run it. So when you run it, you want to apply some drag on it. So as I run it through the pinion, I'm going to be holding it so that it's putting a little bit of a load on it. And we'll see what kind of pattern we end up with. Okay, so we were just setting the preload on this and the spec is one to one and a half, you know, whatever we're calling these notches, I suppose. So we did that and we set that, we ended up tightening up our backlash. So now we're only 0.2. So we want to get back between the 0 0.5, 0 0.7. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this. We're going to effectively move the gear away to give more backlash. And we're going to loosen this off by the same amount. So now that we have the preload set, we're going to like move this one notch loosen this one notch and this is going to move over so we can get back to our five to seven all right so we have our preload on here we have like one and a half notches i guess we'll call them and right here you can see if i zero this out again we're at like 0.6 i believe so if i run this oh hold on we're already turned a bit there you go so point six and spec is between 0.5 and 0.7 or 0.6 so we can throw this thing back together you guys so it's a little bit i wanted to illustrate our uh contact patch here on the tooth it's a lot better before it was hanging off the end and now it's in the center it's just really really hard to see because we don't have the correct marking compound on hand, but it is a lot better. Our pinion is a little bit deeper after changing out that bearing because that bearing was so wiped out that the pinion was getting away and that's why it was starting to fall off the end of the ring gear and the tooth. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and uh, we'll tighten everything up back to spec. We gotta finish uh, torquing a few things, but all in all, she's back together. We'll throw it in and then hopefully uh, we can report in a few hours that there's no noise or at least less noise so he can get home. There's a lot of like chassis vibration to, you know, from that, but possible exhaust rubbing on the chassis, like you said, right? Yeah, kind of. I would suspect that. Those just are based not on what I'm affiliated saying. with the noise. I think the header's probably rubbing somewhere right in this vicinity. Oh, well, it's the header, but it might be the V band here. Like, yeah, Below something, something in this area is rubbing on the chassis. That's what's making your vibration. Yeah. Thing. But you, we have a little bit. You can see like when the like on the rear end when he's under load a little bit. There's some wine back there, but when he's on coast, it's fine. When he lets off, it's quiet on coast. Like right there, it disappears. But, 
there's kind of that one louder spot, but it yeah. kind of quiets down as you. Yeah, you like it seems like once you get like 60, 65 or so, it kind of kind of goes away a little bit. But anyways, the ring and pinion, just from it being uh, wore in the way it was, it's it's gonna have that noise unfortunately until it put a new gear set in it. But at least this is way better than before. Be back. Yeah. Okay, so it's the next day. He's had how many hours of driving? An hour, an hour. So he's been driving for three hours now. Yeah. And still good? Still good. Still good. It changed out. It's all... Yeah, because this thing was screaming, and uh, now she's good to go, so... Keep you guys updated if uh, anything changes, but she's all good to go. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe. Go check out Brando if you're into uh, AE86 stuff. Brando underscore AE86 on Instagram if you're interested. There you go. And we'll see you guys in the next video.